What are five steps to writing a bad book? Only talking about yourself without a, 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 a purpose or a mission of something that you want to have the reader experience, like joy or a journey or an emotional release. I'm talking more in memoir and self-help. Um, using language like it and this and maybe and perhaps in like kind of vague terms instead of rewriting the sentences, every sentence should be a thing of beauty. Um, it's a book, take your time to make every line matter. Don't just think, well, those sentences were good. These can be kind of a slough off. Rewrite every, make every sentence beautiful. Um, don't aim low. Don't decide I'm just gonna write an ebook and give it away for free on your website. I don't think that's not really a book. Honor books. They're boundable, they're thicker. It's something you want to hand to someone and be proud of, not some doorstop or something I'm going to use to balance my computer. Um, I think that's four. And five would be write one draft and then publish it. Why would someone do that? People do it all the time. They're like, that was brilliant. Nailed it in one shot. And they just discount the whole process that... That was just the beginning. You read it, you can tell. You can tell when someone's published the first. You, do, you don't see that in profession, professional, but you see that in, you know, when I was in like networking groups or like, you know, first started my business, people would write books in 90 days or whatever. And you're like, I don't want to read it. <laughs> Please don't give me your book. This is what, I, what I'd be thinking. Because it would just be fluffy. It would spin it where they were, it, wouldn't, it was it, too positive? Or no, it just wouldn't have, you can't, I mean, to really dig in and write a memoir in a short period of time, I don't think it's got enough heft. It hasn't been expanded enough. Um, maybe to write a book about dating, like 101 Tips to Date, you might be able to do that in the first draft. Um, or... 10 tips to good sales calls. You might be able to do that in one draft, but I don't tend to work with those books. When you read an author's work and they write about themselves in too positive a light, how do you break that down? Because we've all read books where, oh yeah, it was written by this CEO or this person and they're just telling their grand vision and it paints them as this saint. Whereas when you read about a third party writing about that same individual, it's much juicier. <laughs> it's a full person, warts and all. So how do you, when you see somebody's being too Pollyanna about themselves, how do you say, I, are we really getting honest here? I don't ever get that. I don't ever get that. I think that there's a lot of self-deprecation in the clients that come to me. I think that they've been through enough of the rough road that self-deprecation is not, it's not so far from them. And um, if, if anything, we're trying to get them to be more positive about themselves and, and see where their beautiful gifts are and see how what they've written about and what they've been through informs so much about who they are. Um, I don't, I can't think of one experience where someone just wants to write about their positive experiences. I mean, I have had those conversations where people have called me and they're like, well, I'm going to write a book about it. And I, and I feel like kind of a cynic going, but where's the darkness, right? Especially when they say, well, there really isn't anything dark about my story. And I think, oh, I don't know. I don't, that, I don't know if that's possible. Who wants to read it? <laughs> Where did you live? <laughs> yeah. Would you say a lot of new writers write books that are mediocre or have no essence? No, not at all. I mean, I think it's, I think everybody's a new writer on any project you start. I'm a new writer. Even though I've been writing since I was 12 years old, um, anytime you take on a new narrative, or a new group of characters, or maybe a new style of writing, or you're going into new territory, 
you're new. You know, you might have more of a bag of tools with you. You might know better paragraph structure. You might do better bridges in and out of your chapters. You might know not to bring in too many characters in the whole kitchen sink. You might have your themes broken down, your why broken down, and your bigger message, and you know who you're writing for, and you know what you're an expert in, but you're still new. It's still a fresh slate. You're still gonna have all the same butterflies in your stomach. You're still gonna have all the same, you know, disembarking on this like amazing journey. And I always say books are a journey, not a destination. You're really not ever really getting anywhere. Even like you're you're in a journey. Like if you get there, the journey's over. Why, books should continue forever. Explain to me what a bridge is between chapters. A bridge is leading out of one chapter into the next chapter. So it, it either summarizes and concludes the, the first, the chapter that's just ending and leads you into the next chapter with a flow. So you don't feel just that one chapter ends and then the next chapter starts. There's some kind of, with fiction, it's a little bit different, especially if you're jumping around locations, but there is some kind of, uh, there's a there's a skill involved in leading the reader in through like a tapestry of the chapters, and that's what the bridges do. And that's really what we do in the third draft as we work on the bridges. How can you tell a story is boring or it's wandering? What, what tips do you have to, like you said, with the one gentleman who had an interesting career, but mm -hmm. it, it needed it needed um, these fifteen tips. I like people to write their story first, first draft before I start killing their babies is what I, the way I call it. And that's, um, I get pretty brutal. Like I'll start to go through and just be like, why do we care? And who's this for? And what does this do? And why do we need this? And if I get some pushback, I'll listen because there could be something that isn't really be being said. And we'll have sometimes like a debate about it. like. Well, what do you mean that, 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 that you say that this is about that character's evolution? I don't see any evolution here at all. I see her just washing dishes in the kitchen with her grandmother. Where's the evolution? Well, the grandmother threw the thing. And, well, you didn't write that the grandmother threw the thing. You just wrote the, oh. Then they go and write it, and it's now a, a scene that almost is like required. So you don't try to, you don't try to throw up any, you might have entire storylines that just go, right? Because sometimes it seems, all seems relevant on the first draft. And then in the second draft, we don't need everybody to know every single part of your life. We just need the parts that serve the themes that are running through. And if that chunk does not serve the theme, they're not going to know the difference whether you kept it out or not because they don't know you. They only know what you're going to tell them you want them to know. So if we're like, oh, Grandpa John, he would make these great birdhouses. And he's just, no, do we, is Grandpa John necessary right. to the story? Oh, he was a really cool guy. He was, I would, we would watch these. No, no. Is he necessary? Right. No. Yeah, okay. Grandpa John's gone. Sorry. Yeah. Right. And how do people <laughs> feel about that when it's like, that, that was Grandpa John. He's got to be in the story. He was a big part of the family, but there wasn't enough. And I'm like, you can put Grandpa John in the book for Grandpa John, but that's not going to help your book. We need to focus on the book. What does the book need? What is you know? Maybe you can write a little letter to Grandpa John or something. Put him in the uh, put him in the acknowledgments. <laughs> okay, right. With a picture. No, well, that's right. We're not doing pictures. I was going <laughs> to say the right. birdhouse. No pictures. Right. No graphics. 